Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part 4 of our 5-part Corset 2019 pre-release prep series. Today we're going to be looking at the red cards that you want to open at your pre-release this weekend, and if you open a lot of these cards, you might want to think about playing some red. Now we're going to have a special focus, of course, in this video on commons and uncommons, since those are the cards you're going to see the most of in your sealed pool this coming weekend. Quickly before we get started, though, just a fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support what we do here at the channel, one of which is our Patreon page. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon down below. If you make any purchases from Amazon, once you go through that initial link, no matter what it is, actually, we'll get a small percentage for the channel. Finally, Flipside Gaming is still offering a promo code for our viewers. Hopefully you can save some cash while you support us. And as always, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. You all help the channel out immensely. And with that being said, let's get into it. Like the other videos in the series, we're going to start off by looking at the signpost cards that touch red. Just a quick reminder, these are going to be two colored uncommon cards that you'll find in the set that really showcase what the two colors are trying to do together. Now, this is maybe more important in draft situations than sealed, but I think it's still good to know for sealed synergies too. The first one, Boros Colors, Heroic Reinforcements. And this is actually a pretty good card in its own right, but if you're in these colors, you are going to have opportunities to go wide with a lot of small creatures or tokens, and then perhaps buff them for a big game-ending turn. Secondly, you're going to find Enigma Drake and the Izzet Colors Blue and Red. Of course, those colors are a little more focused on sorceries and instants, so this card takes advantage of that. Brawl Bash Ogre in the Rakdos colors, red and black, they're trying to play with a sacrifice for benefit theme, so you'll have a lot of small creatures, you'll be able to sacrifice them to different things to get abilities, and you see that evident in this particular card as well. Draconic Disciple and Gruul is all about ramp from the green side of things, and then from the red side of things, dragons, and this card embodies that perfectly. Alright, let's look at some red commons that are a little more high-end cards you want to see when you open your packs. The first one I picked is Catalyst Elemental. Usually not a big fan of 2-2s two for 3, but this one lets you bank a little bit of mana so that maybe you can have a bigger turn 4 or turn 5. And if you can get ahead of curve, that can actually be very, very good for you. Electrify. Okay, you're going to see a lot of direct damage on our list today because that's always powerful and sealed. This is a pretty fast card considering it's an instant. It only costs 4. It's very splashable too. That's great. And it can deal with most threats you're going to run into on the battlefield and sealed. Goblin Motivator. Okay, another type of card I'm usually not a big fan of, the one-drop one-ones. But if they have good abilities, I will pay attention to them, and I think this one's good enough. Many times, especially if you're in Boros colors or maybe Grill colors, being able to give a creature haste and just stay almost like one turn ahead than you normally would be could be quite good for you from time to time. This is something that maybe doesn't fit into every build, but this does complement more aggressive strategies very well. Shock. Okay, y'all know what Shock does. It's just awesome. It's cheap, it's quick, one casting cost, instant speed, two damage to any target. It can go to the face in a pinch, but it can also deal with a lot of the small creatures that will be populating the battlefield early on in a game of sealed. Let's move on to some uncommons. Beginning with Dragon Egg, I always like this card because it gums up the battlefield nicely. You put this down on turn 3, if your opponent is being more aggressive, they have some decisions to make. Do they still keep attacking, let you block with this, and then get the 2-2 Flying Fire Breathing token? Or do they lay off a little bit? And this can really slow down a more aggressive deck. What else I like about it is if you want to be more aggressive, you can maybe play this, sacrifice it to another effect. There's plenty of that going on in Rakdos Colors, like I mentioned. And now you got a 2-2 Fire Breathing Flyer. That's not bad at all. Lightning Strike. Okay, another card you're very, very familiar with. Not Lightning Bolt, granted, but you know what? In Sealed, it's going to feel like Lightning Bolt. It's going to be awesome. Siegebreaker Giants. When you're building your Sealed deck, you're looking for a few things. Of course, Bomb, like Wing Condition cards. But the other things that are really important to think about are, of course, Removal Spells, which we've been talking about, and a card like this, which is a way to get past a board stall. There are a lot of board stalls that will happen in games of sealed. Now, a 6-3 for 5 with trample is okay. Like, that's fine. Nothing crazy. But that ability is what makes this card fantastic. Thud. This is very reminiscent of fling in a lot of ways. A little slower being a sorcery, but it only costs 1, so that's kind of cool. The damage can be dealt to any target, which is very, very nice. 
And many times, again, those board stalls where you get stuck, especially if you have a more aggressive build and you are able to do a lot of damage early on, sometimes this card can close out a game for you under the right circumstances. This might be a little bit better in gruel colors because you might have some larger creatures to interact with, but it's going to be good no matter what. Volcanic Dragon. Okay, I picked this one mostly because it's a very substantial creature with evasion at the uncommon spot. You don't see this all the time. So... For six mana, it's a little pricey. However, it does have haste, so it's going to feel more like a five drop, which is very reasonable. A four, four flyer with haste for six, I feel it can do a lot of work for you. Okay, let's talk about just a couple bomb rares that you may encounter when you open your packs in red. Now, remember, when you find one of these rares, if your other red cards aren't great, then maybe you do have to skip them. But I will take special notice of a color when I see an amazing card that's at rare or mythic. Now, Luckily, these are also splashable, as you'll see in a moment. Banefire. All right, this card is awesome. Now, if you're lucky enough to open this thing, this can be a game-finishing card for you, especially in red if you're doing a lot of early damage and you start to run out of gas. Later in the game, you can get over a board stall with a direct damage spell like this. In a pinch, it's splashable, and it also can hit a creature if you're really in trouble and you need to defend yourself a little bit. So it's got versatility. It can close out games. This is just a huge bomb rare. If X is 5 or more, it can't even be stopped by counter magic. Spit Flame. This one, if you have dragons, obviously gets better. If you don't have dragons, it's still pretty awesome. 3 casting cost, instant speed. It deals 4 damage to target creature. Sure, it can't go to the opponent. It doesn't have that same versatility as some of the other cards we looked at today. But at the same time, it's going to deal with so many threats at instant speed for a very reasonable cost. And again, if you have dragons, well, great. It's even better. Okay, before we wrap things up, I just want to talk about a few artifacts since we haven't talked about them yet in this series. The first one is a common, it's Explosive Apparatus. I like this card a lot. I remember in Shadows Over Innistrad when I first started playing Sealed and Draft, I was kind of like, oh, this seems okay. The more I played with it, the better it felt, especially if you're not in colors that can typically deal with a lot of small threats quickly. Like red and black don't have that problem usually, but in Sealed, you never know. Your pool might be a little restricted. But outside of those colors especially, this can be really good. If you're like in a blue-white deck or something like that, you can really appreciate this. So if it's into any deck, and of course also blue and white are looking for artifacts. They have that artifact matter theme we've been talking about. So having this on the battlefield could enhance creatures. And then when you need it to blow something up, you can blow something up. Also, it has the versatility of going to any target, which is really awesome. Arcane Encyclopedia. This is an uncommon that I feel like would fit well in a lot of builds. I mean, you might have better card draw spells, especially if you're in blue, and if that's the case, maybe you don't need this. But I do think the costs are reasonable here. Three to get on the battlefield, three to activate. It is repeatable, which is kind of nice, especially, again, in a long, grindy game. This could make a big difference. It might not be necessary for every deck, but if you are in a build that doesn't have another way to move quickly through your deck, I would include it. Suspicious Bookcase. A lot of versatility here in this uncommon. A 0-4 for 2 is kind of nice to gum up the ground, deal with early aggressive creatures. And then that 3 and tap ability, target creature can't be blocked this turn. That makes this very useful in the later portion of the game too if you're in a board stall. So it's good early, it's good late. I like the versatility here. Sigiled Sword of Veleron. This is the last card we'll look at, but I thought this was an interesting rare. It's not necessarily the best thing in the world if you're already behind, but if you're in a board stall type situation or if you're just trying to pull ahead, this can be decent. I feel like it's reasonably costed at 3 and 3 to equip. Being able to put this on the creature, give it a little power buff and vigilance, and then also make these knight tokens. And of course, even if the creature dies, then you can move this even to one of your tokens, perhaps, and still find value as the game goes on. So this is a very persistent, very hard to deal with card. If your opponent doesn't have an answer for this, they could be in trouble. All right, with that being said, that is a look at red and some notable artifacts. We're going to be back tomorrow to look at all the green cards and a few multicolor cards. And then the following day, I'm going to be doing a pre-release primer, which is really geared for newer players and give them some expectations around what to expect at a pre-release. Friday, we're going to do a special edition of the Market Watch, looking at the cards from the core set, so you know what you're opening this weekend and what the values are. Then Saturday, we'll do our normal, regular episode of the Market Watch. So until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day.
Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.